So welcome everybody. Um, this is our uh, continue continue uh, live webcast on uh, a service. So in in the past, we have uh, spoken on a value of enlightened leadership. Uh, we have spoken on uh, and enlightened leadership in terms of the wisdom. Uh, enlightened leadership in terms of the compassion and also um, a spiritual uh, spirituality in inspiration so there are a number of uh, different uh, aspects of enlightened leaderships that we have uh, spoken in the past so we will so here we will continue to do that so before we enter into like a, a deeper uh, and sense of conversation and uh, teaching uh, i would like to just kind of moment of uh, start with a little bit more like a silence so everybody remains a little bit more silence Okay, so here uh, during this live webcast, uh, I would like to speak a little bit more about inspiring other people to serve. So I think uh, uh, it's really important that we all know that anything we wanted to do, um, helping other people, helping community, helping our larger sense of society, country, uh, so whatever we are trying to do to help as a group, uh, it is it's um, almost impossible to do anything without <clears throat> getting help from other people or get, or inspiring other people to be part of that service and to work collectively together. So there's no way uh, I think uh, one can really do anything. So in many situations in our life, when somebody is trying to do alone, uh, it's always very difficult and always not usually not very successful, and and it it doesn't work very well. So I think it's really important to to inspire other people to uh, serve, inspire other people to help, able to connect with other people, able to work with other people, able to. Uh, uh, accommodate other people's need and so it's always about working with somebody and other people so I think that's a very important part I would like to speak about that in in this uh, session uh, first I think uh, to set up like as enlightened leaderships that uh, whatever you're trying to do uh, to to be very very clear internally what is your purpose uh, what is your uh, the genuine uh, purpose, uh, a collective 
a mission what is your collective mission so it's not something that uh, you are trying to do for yourself but you're trying to do for a community for others uh, so if it's for others in the community then that means there is some a collective mission that we all share together we value together so to remembering that what is that like for example in the dharma centers will be preserving the teaching or in organization like servicing others to help other people whatever the collective mission is i think to to to, to be very fully aware of that remembering that i am part of this group i am part of this community i am part of this world a global sense i am here to do this specific thing the purpose a purpose of uh, the service so to be very very clear about that i think it's very important because uh, very often what what happened is that people do not have that clear vision uh, and maybe sometimes people do have some kind of vision in the beginning and when they get when they get involved in a uh, collective conflicts and in individual conflicts personal pain a personal ego trip and then you begin to lose their collective purpose then when you lose their collective purpose then not almost no matter what you do then it doesn't really work very well so first of all i think it's important to set right intention uh, which is more like a collective purpose what is the collective mission is and then second i think in order to mm, working with the other people and uh, inspiring other people it's always about making a connection so how you really need to, to uh, connect with people so whoever is working for you working with you um to in order it's really important that uh, you 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 are able to connect with them that there is a connection with the other people so i think that mm, uh, if there is no genuine connection or some sense of uh, genuine connection and then in long run uh, that you cannot really inspire other people long run that kind of collaboration will not work so when there is a genuine heart to heart connection um, when there is in sense of uh, uh, um, that some sense of uh, understanding of collective purpose mission which is the same uh, uh, for with other people what you feel other people is feeling the same and then that there is a collaboration begins on the basis of those qualities then i think you can inspire other people what uh, other people what other people will do will able to help their collective purpose so connection and collaboration with others i think it's a very important key and then i think also very it's very important is that in our life you know i always say that uh, end of the day it really feels like uh, we are born on this earth we are here to help others we are here to serve others uh, so that uh, either it's like a serving other in a sense of a very large sense of community in the world everybody like in the bodhicitta compassion practice is saying to may all the sentient being free from their suffering may some of people free from their suffering may these people be free from suffering may my community f be free from their suffering may my family f feel from suffering may my partner may my child you, somehow from very large view to kind of coming down to a very narrow view but it's always i think in some sense it's it's others uh, that i think the um, the compassion is very much kind of focusing on others so um, uh, which does not mean that you're not focusing on yourself i think the sometime uh, focusing healthy focus on others is the way of uh, helping oneself also but unhealthy focusing on yourself is neither it helps you nor it helps others so it doesn't work that well like a very ego very ego oriented self-caring um, uh, views so that doesn't work so 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 we all are here to serve and of course some of some of us like uh, you you are 
in a specific role, like you are a president of the organization, uh, you are uh, in charge of a specific role in 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 helping uh, in the spiritual community, in the business, in the companies, in corporations, wherever, uh, in many nonprofits, wherever you are working, you you are you are in charge. You are you are responsible for that service. So, and we do in our life, we do as much as you can do. So, I think it's basically what I'm trying to say here is that trying to do the best what you can do and as long as you wanted to do you are able to do you can do it but at some point then it would also come to the place a uh, terms is finished you know like you it's, it's you're working for three years you're working for five years you're working for 10 years whatever or maybe you are you can work for a whole life but maybe you feel it, it's a time to let go for that specific role and I think that those are really important to call also uh, in order to serve. I think it's very important to uh, able to let go and inspire other people to engage and other people to do not always that thing that you have to be control in control. You have to do all and you have to do by yourself and, uh, and not uh, inspiring, not trusting not uh, uh, allowing, not ac uh, uh, accommodating other people in the process of trying to accomplish something in 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 the community in in social services. I think that's kind of I often see that kind of challenges in the groups where it, it becomes a really problematic where somebody is trying to just hold on uh, things that which is not working, so they are not able to. Uh, they're not doing good job. Uh, they don't have a time to good job, or they don't have a skill to do it good job. Um, but they wanted to hold on it just because of a sense of a po gaining a power or something, which is not really there. There's a, and not really there's a, any power to gain. But at, le at least in their mind, their ego saying, "I am in charge" or something like that. So I think it's a very uh, unhealthy situation uh, but it's so that what I'm saying here is it's very important to be aware of your own position your own time your own skills your own joyful effort do I have this quality to serve or maybe it's a time for me to step down at least in one area step down to maybe move into the another area to fully able to be aware of those things it's, I think it's important. I'm not saying that you should not serve for a long time. Serve as much as you want to serve, as, as long as you want you want to serve, to the point when you when you realize you're losing this internal quality to serve well, then I think it's really important to be open for others to come in, give the power away, share the power with somebody, trust other people, inspire other people. That's, I think, very, very important in service. And uh, of course, um, when we when we we were trying to do that, uh, it's always a question about uh, finding the right people uh, and finding the right people to uh, so to in, in to, in order to inspire other people, you have to find the right people that you feel you can trust and you you feel you can let go, and uh, so uh, so I think of course it's it's a uh, so sometime um, that I think if you're really like a genuinely open enough, you will find people. If you genuinely open enough, uh, people will come to you. And uh, so, um, so when you are not finding people, uh, in in some way, maybe it's also possible that you really don't want to find the people maybe you really don't you're not fully uh, able to let go of that power and position to let other people to get engaged and involved so so somehow sometimes it's good to reflect that if you're not finding maybe it has something to do with that too maybe other time maybe you have to open your view like a, you need a like a uh, a fish eye camera lens or you have the wide angle camera lens you know like a lens you have the different lens to look you're not like you're focusing on one thing 
but you are trying to open up your view greater and um, and then once you find somebody um, I think then then it's really important to able to uh, genuinely uh, fully and with some sense of trust able to let go of um, you, the the attachment basically the attachment of whatever the what you're trying to do to let it go to to share that power and with somebody else uh, and and trust those people um, and then I think of course one can always say that okay well I will I will let go but if I find the right per right person to let go and the right person that I can trust but somehow it's interesting dynamic that uh, that when you begin to trust people people start to become more trustworthy when you be, when you begin to have a distrust when you begin to doubt about things you're also creating a doubtful individuals who who might not able to do things so it's somehow we we are able to uh, recreate each other we are able to find the best out of each other we are able to sometimes dig into the wars of each other so somehow it's also involved with the very much a process of how you relate with the people and so it it there's some sense of changeable it's a changeable thing and uh, and then some point of course if if you do it I mean if I say if I do it I will I'll do a mistake and if somebody does it somebody might do a mistake so you have to be open to uh, these these mistakes happen, so it's not like a, you you cannot find a person who will not do a mistake or something like that. So so somehow, um, and then maybe sometimes even a prayer. I sometimes pray that may I find the right people. May I find the right people, and I I I, I must say that that in my life I have been incredibly incredibly lucky and and um, I feel so lucky that finding so many wonderful people and so many capable people so many people that I can trust and uh, this is I always feel that and I I think uh, in some sense that uh, a little um, service that I have done in my life and uh, whatever I have created in my life they all came from everybody else what everybody did it's not me what I did but it was everybody who helped me and who did it basically who basically did it and uh, but people came to me I feel in my own experiences people came to me uh, is because I stay very open to people to come come in and get engaged in in that and I think if I if I were not open enough I'm sure less people have come if I'm very close lesser people have come come if I was very close probably nobody have came and that means if I have to do anything I have to do myself only myself which is then it's impossible to do anything in terms of the really uh, concretely trying to manifest something as a service and helping other people just simple as is simple as the web the webcast what you're hearing right now if, if one way you look at it you know it's kind of maybe it's a very simple thing you know just just doing the webcast but on the other hand you look at it it does has all those uh, all those little qualities in, in it uh, qualities such as to be open to idea of webcast just just idea that webcast can be done to be open to that and not be fearful about that not be fearful of being criticized not be fearful of it is not going to be perfect not to be fear of fearful of is something's going to be wrong of course there always something is going to go wrong always something goes wrong um, just even even this webcast I just forgot to put my the, I said in my earphone, you know, like the microphone and things like that. But so, what is the big deal about it? You know, it's okay. You forgot the microphone, and then you, some point, somebody reminds you and just put it on. So it's not like a, being fearful about any of these things. So, and then you you see uh, these all these are translated into many languages. 
there are many people are engaged in helping with these things but we we are we are open we invite them people get engaged people involved and sometimes it doesn't work when it doesn't work it's okay there's a space to not to work everything every time perfect so to to trusting situation like that to be open like that to invite invite to get other people to in, involve i think these all are very important and again i must say i i personally feel really really very lucky to always finding so many incredible people in my life supporting me so i of course i take this moment to thank all of you actually that those who we don't say enough thank you and uh, so and and just basically all of you who have done who have been part of these uh, all these services uh, helping uh, Ligmicha and helping me I wanted to thank you for from deep my heart um, so once we uh, find uh, people so people we inspire people uh, we open to people we inviting people and trusting and trusting that everything will be fine and once we find people I think then that's really important to able to trust them you know able to trust them and able to let go of your own attachment and grasping mind you know to I think that's very important because many times people uh, inspire other people and other people come in and when other people are it, and really begin to do something and begin to initiate something begin to be active then becomes a fearful about something might you might lose something some something somebody might take take away something like that being more in that fear situation so not being like that so the ability to trust more to other people i think that is very important now on the other hand i think it's very important that what what are the kind of things that actually um doesn't work actually kind of messes up in in you know in services obviously as we just just we talked about it being open that's definitely a quality connection connecting with others these are definitely a quality trusting letting go then sense of a sense of what what really uh, destroys many relationship is some people when when you feel uh, fearful when you feel negative when you use your pain speech too much too frequently your your mind is more like a stuck in a dark area and fearful areas then it's very difficult to inspire other people you, one cannot inspire other people i know sometimes a very specific situation in organizations where people do a great thing for quite long time and suddenly for many different reasons they begin to lose their inspirations their connections and when they, they when they lose it sometimes they lose it completely sometimes maybe they don't lose it completely but then they're trying to say okay now i have done service enough i want somebody else to do it i'm not finding people and why I'm not finding people? Because I can see sometimes 
if you look at that that person who is looking for other people other people that person is not able to inspire other people that person if you look at that person 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 is you can see this person is totally there's no inspiration you can see when that person talks about saying oh i have uh, i have done this this is too difficult too complicated too much confusing too much conflict i wanted to look for somebody else to take care of it you see is that inspiring you think you some you find somebody saying yes if it's too much a problem too much difficult too much challenging uh, too much confusing i'll be happy to do it that's not very inspiring instead of you know feeling have you trying to have a right relation to so far what you have done this i have done my best i have served many this many years i have done done quite a lot and i want it to continue something that i will leave behind beyond me this has been a great blessing for me able to serve I want other people, you know, giving opportunity for other people to do the same. So if if you if somebody feels your heart, if somebody feels your openness, if you somebody feels your joyful effort, if somebody feels your enthusiasm, if somebody feels your that kind of drive and fire, motivations, positive motivations, and obviously you you inspire people. You can people 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 feel that people will feel that energy from you people will feel that openness uh, fearlessness uh, entrepreneurship quality uh, people will feel that and it will help be other people to get in touch with their own internal quality or their own internal quality and their own internal internal drive in inspirations so i think it's very important uh trying to uh, trying to make it simple in order to inspire other people you know if you want need somebody if you need order to inspire other people watching your pain body particularly watching your pain speech of obviously watching your pain mind so if your body is clear if your speech is inspiring if your mind is open and whatever comes through that body through that speech through that mind for sure it will play a more important role to inspire other people and particularly those you are having difficult to finding people to help you watch your pain body speech and mind people might be already there but you're not allowing them to come closer to you because of these pain are manifesting it's just it's just very simple concept i think how you attract people people need to, to feel these inner qualities so that i think is a very important to i just wanted to uh, say that and of course you know i wanted to um, these are not uh, how you say um, these are directly related with the teaching for sure as we said we we talked about the value of enlightened leadership we talked about wisdom we talk wisdom uh, uh, wisdom aspect of enlightened leadership that which is very much working with one's own ego not getting trapped with one's own pain and ego we talk about caring for others uh, considering others being aware of others paying attention to the others um, that sense of compassion we talked about the service as a spirituality so that we 
everybody who is in the Dharma, who is in the spiritual path, that we, whatever we do service, not just a service or work or just an event or, 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 or action, but it's uh, that action becoming a part of one's own spiritual development. So we talk that, uh, I think it's very important. Personal for me, it's very important that um, that it's my practice. My service is my practice. My service is my spiritual practice. And then and now we are talking about inspiring others. So these all specific areas of discussions, they all are connected to each other. And uh, and I personally, uh, it's, it's also very, very much related to things that I personally trying to do. So, so I wanted to share some little bit of my own like a personal experiences, you know, like uh, I feel like uh, the teaching in general, but you know, so as I'm as a burn practitioner, being part of, being very lucky to receive wonderful teachings from my teachers and one lot of trans transmissions. Um, as I grew growing up, and uh, so many things that what I have learned as totally coming into a different culture, different different country from east to the west. Of course, there were so many years of learning uh, process for me and trying to understand uh, culture, trying to understand other people, trying to understand myself, uh, trying to understand how I can help more, help better. And of course, it all came down to, to be to very much a place to be more open, which is I just began to teach a lot about like saying that openness, awareness, and warmth. This is uh, the, the qualities of the inner refuge that I talk about. So openness came down to a very important question. So when it came down to openness, what does that mean? That means trying to be open to many situations, trying to be open to uh, to be open to the places usually people might not be open to it for whatever reasons. I personally, you know, to have many um, uh, teachers, resi resident teachers in different uh, centers, trying to be open to have all these teachers come and give them complete support to run the run and collaborate with the centers so that i feel that's very much my way of letting go and letting other people to 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 help to also to among my western students that many people who have been studying with me for a very long time uh, I'm personally trying to do as best as possible to train them as a teachers, creating, uh, opening the access to them, all the centers and the places, so that they can, uh, you know, uh, teach, travel, and explore and help other people and learn and go deeper in their own spiritual practices. The three door programs. Um, I, if you, many of you probably don't know about this, but if you, those you know, and those you even have a doubt about it, you you ask people who have went through these programs, ask them who have completed this program, ask them what was their experiences. I am personally amazed. Most of the people, they basically they change. The the body is different. Their speech is different. Their mind is different. It's no longer the same person anymore because of the power of the teachings. Because how they work with, with per, on a personal level, how they work with it, how community supported them to work with them, how they create the right space of trust among themselves to work with them. So this is a kind of new, kind of in some sense of new way, but 
I'm at trying to be open to, to that new approach. But the core teaching have not compromised. The approach, the way of teaching, and has to be compromised. That is a service. For me personally, it's a service. Having trust, trusting that many people, let them doing what they how they wanted to continue to do, but with trying to do help them and guide them as much as possible. I'm not trying to be saying, oh, how, what I have done, this and that here. I'm just saying this is an example of personal example, personal experiences. Uh, the researches in the hospitals that so far amount of things that we have done, we have done quite a bit because in the hospitals, people need it. We are trying to bring into the schools the teaching and the practices because they need it. We are trying to bring the teaching and the practices to the prison because they need it. There are people who wanted to help in that area, and that area there is a need of help. And I have an opportunity to open the door and support that. How possible that I will not support that? So everything what I'm trying to do is somehow in a, in a way I'm not I'm not really saying I did it. I I could say I didn't do it. I think that's probably a very important distinction here. It's, it's I did not do it. But I allow it to happen. I I inspire other people. I brought in other people. I trusted them. I let them do it. I give enough space to them enough trust to them and that's how things happen let's say everything goes back just in a second everything goes back and it dissolves into one thing and go back to the point first if nothing happened that means only reason why nothing happened i'm not open i'm fearful i'm less trusting I did not give a space. So I feel like uh, this is it's so important, uh, just trying to conclude that back, it's so important in, in the service that you cannot really do well, serve other people, serve community, so serve country, unless you engage other people, inspire other people. And in order to do that, you have to be fearless. There's nothing you can lose. Everybody's afraid of losing something. What do you can lose? You came naked, you go naked. So being open, being fearless, trusting and knowing the mistake can happen knowing something can go wrong and it's okay and if just every time you know like every time when you you feel that you know when you feel space you feel a little bit more confidence you feel a little bit more playfulness you feel a little bit more joy more creativity comes naturally more creativity naturally comes, you kind of play with it, dance with it, dance with other people together. You watch your mind as it, it evolves, as things are developing. You can watch your mind. Mind is kind of open and not open, being closed, fearful, doubtful, all those things, but continuously trusting yourself, your situation. It will be fine. It will be fine. Come in, be part of it, join us.
let's do together let's serve together So I think, you know, the, the, I mean, like I can give so many different examples in my life, in my experiences. I, I really, really feel I'm saying it. I'm, I did not do anything. You know, I, I, I inspire other people and I invited other people uh, and I s support other people and everything what happened is other people did it. And I, th I think that's the really genuinely, that's the only way to do it. Because that's, I mean, I don't know, you, I don't know you watched the game or not. Um, yesterday, uh, uh, Singh, he, he loves uh, uh, soccer, football. And uh, so we watched the game yesterday. Um, the Argentina played. Uh, I don't. I, I'm sure. Probably in this country, many people did not watch. But maybe in Europe and other places, I'm sure many people. South America, Mexico. I'm sure many people watch. But Messi, you know, uh, in 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 less than a half an hour, he scored three goals. If you those you have watched it, just look at how did he score that. This is a very good example of the teaching. He's cool, calm. He didn't went to fight with somebody. He was not like aggressive. He was not mean. He didn't even, I didn't see he'd run that much either. No, not mean, not aggressive, not hitting somebody, not trying to play trick. Not even putting so much effort. He scored three more than I say three goals in less than half an hour. Which people it takes so many long time to do that. How he did it? Of course, who he is, who he is. But apart from that, he waited. Most important part is he waited for the right moment and the right moment when it came he did not miss that opportunity the right moment comes in life to you you don't miss that opportunity from that place of stillness place of silence place of spaciousness take action The accuracy, the precision could ever come as best as possible if it's coming from those places. But fighting, struggling, getting other people mad, confusing, getting confused, punishing yourself, judging yourself, none of those do any good. So, so in a way, like a service is very much like that. Any given moment in our life, sometime what you're really trying to do, maybe you're not meant to do that. But then how do you know what you're really supposed to meant to do that, that moment? The only way to see that is to be fully open to that moment. Maybe you you meant to be still. Maybe you meant to be silence. Maybe you meant to be just stay open in presence. Maybe you meant to take some actions. Maybe you meant to say something or do something. How do you find out? If you are connected to yourself, more likely you will find out what to do and what not to do. 
and sometimes spe specifically when people feel I have to do it I only I can do it I cannot imagine somebody else doing it I don't think other people can do it as good as I can do it those are the good not a good idea to think that way So, waiting for that right moment in life and tapping into that situation from your highest place in yourself. You can almost say, it will work. And that right moment, the right situation, every moment will be different moments. And you don't know what those different moments are in your life. But you can trust that. And from your highest place, take action. And from your highest place, you will see more, you will feel more, you will connect more. When you, you, will, when you take action, it will be more accurate and more precise. And for sure, in the end, it will be more beneficial. So trying to come from that those places more than from the pain, frustrations, conflict. Yeah. Okay. I think I think uh, it's fine. Um, so let's uh, um, start a short meditation, and then. Uh, after a short meditation, uh, we will have some opportunity to ask some questions. And uh, this time, uh, uh, I think uh, our team has found out uh, very exciting that uh, the the question and answer can be a little bit more interactive. That you, I will hear your voice, and uh, everybody else will hear your voice also. The one who will ask question and even able to. Uh, see the person who is asking question. I know this this is like a first time we're experimenting, but might not work. <laughs> and I, as I said earlier, that it, if it doesn't work, it's completely fine. And but we are we, we are going to experiment that. And so so some of you who are um, a poly, uh, we are here. Scott and Nick uh, are here with me in. California in, uh, and and uh, Polly is in, uh, in in Virginia so trying to help with this. So so I th when we are opening up the question, then I think uh, Polly is going to give you give some instruction how to how to ask the question so that we can able to see and hear you. Uh, let's try that. So before we do that, so we're going to do a short meditation, and this meditation is to to reflect and practice a little bit about all of you who are in the leadership position uh how to work better with the people who are working for you working with you you're collaborating with them how, how what would be the best way to collaborate with others to inspire others even even your boss so even you you know uh, even the boss supposed to inspire you. If the boss is not able to inspire you, you inspire the boss. You know, so I think uh, inspiring others. So we will more focus on that. So before we go into that, uh, everybody who you know to do the nine breathing or purification, and those you don't know, just breathe deep in every. Pay a little more close attention to the exhalation and just release it out. Whatever this moment you're holding. Uh, any form of blockages you just trying to clear that release that and and after the nine breathing deep breathings we're trying to go deeper and trying to connect with inner stillness and silence and spaciousness
Just be aware and feel the opening, openness in three channels in your body, in the central of your body. Be aware, feel a sense of openness in the central of your body from the navel to the crown. Connect with the central of your body. Be aware of the stillness in your body. Connect and rest as deep as possible. Feel the silence and connect with that. Be aware of the spaciousness in your mind and be aware and rest in that space, sacred space. Continuously breathe deep, not hold your breath.
Now gradually bring into a conscious, into awareness. People either work for you, work with you, or you're working for somebody that you wanted to inspire, you wanted to work better with somebody. Just be, bring into a conscious a little bit those people. Just see their faces, feel them, connect with them, be open to them. See how beautiful they are, how kind they are, how hard they work. And if they are sometimes challenging, then you see they're doing their best. They cannot do maybe better. Or they are going through difficult moments. Feel them, feel empathy, feel warmth, feel connection. Take your time. Don't be passive. As I'm suggesting, just trying to follow. See them, feel them, connect with them, feel how grateful you are, perhaps those people. how much they have done for you. And sometimes if it's challenging, then you're just trying to see they're doing their best. Maybe they cannot do better. A limitation with skills. Limitation with the personality. Maybe they are going through difficult moments. It's trying to see a bigger picture than just from the point of view of from your pain. Feel empathy, feel compassion, feel connection, feel that warmth and kindness. Just feel thankful 
to those people or find way to inspire these people so whatever a spontaneous awareness arises to take certain action of your body to sp or speech or mind to how to inspire others see them feel them feel the fire and commitment to act take action on these awakening in these discoveries these new thoughts new feelings new emotions give a birth to them Okay. So we can uh, open up uh, some questions. Our new experiment. a question from Anna Rose how can I inspire someone who works hard for our cause but who also spreads gossip and negativity and is difficult to be around so the question is how I, I can inspire a person who works hard uh, but uh, spread around a lot of negative gossips I know exactly what you're talking about <laughs> yeah so uh, I think um, you know sometime to ne meaningless negative gossips not paying too much attention to them uh, it might be better uh, because uh, because you know there's no substance behind there's no really nothing there so uh, um, not to worry and not to engage particularly uh, trying to be aware that you don't say anything you don't do any negative gossip that you don't like other people do those gossips I think that's the most important thing what I would say that you do not do any negative gossip about other people that you don't like uh, because many times we these the gossip and the, this kind of conversation is something that you don't pay attention you you feel you're talking with your friend you are kind of joyful playful and you're making a comment about somebody who are really you don't really mean anything negative because you kind of you're in a good space good mood having fun but you're still talking about somebody you're still you still made a comment a strange comment negative comment opinion about somebody and uh, of course in that moment in that cafe in that good 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 moment it doesn't mean much but that when that translated into a, in somebody else's pain mind that that goes into somebody else's pain mind somebody hears that oh did she say that that did she say that about me then it 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 becomes a big story so i think not to just trying to be aware not to say anything that we can become unnecessary ex, uh, expanding more negative gossip so I, that 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 would be good, and not pay too much attention. I think, uh, th I, at least, I mean, that's what I would trying to do. <laughs> this is another chat question from Roxanne. 
how do you recognize that you are being spontaneous or reactive? Also, recognizing an insight from another trick of the mind. How do you feel it? Yeah, so the question is, how do you distinguish that if, if some spontaneous uh, action or, or it's uh, another trick of mind or or it's something what what is it that something more planned or something more coming from a negative place or something right spontaneously Spon spontaneously reactive okay so i don't know i don't i don't i'm not sure about that word spontaneous spontaneous reactive spontaneous or reactive, uh, spontaneous or reactive. okay so so anyway so the, the 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 i think the main thing is to to be aware is really very much how you feel you know when when you know you are you are totally relaxed when you know you are totally feeling calm connected and uh, you feel you are open and you feel uh, and that spontaneous response came from that place you would know that you would know that i think it's it's difficult to tell exactly this and that but i think you you pay close attention to yourself you know it's not that difficult to make distinction so i think i would more leave it back to you trying to pay a little more close closer um, attention to what's happening in you that moment okay. another chat question how can i inspire people i haven't met in person can i talk to them just over email chats and sometimes hangouts sometime or sometimes on Hangouts, Google Hangouts. Yeah, go ahead, yeah. So how to inspire people who I have never met? Yeah. Uh, can I do that from chat, email, and things things like that, right? So first, maybe trying to inspire people who you do know. I think there's so many people around us in our life that people who are need of help that people who are lost and confused those people there are many people who are actually trying to connect with you and trying to ask support from you so i think um, to do work with them first and then once you work them first and you have number of time experiencing experiences inspiring them i'm sure then you'll easily figure out how to inspire people you don't you haven't met think about that you know like how, sometimes we feel sometimes we feel okay when you are in a when when everything is going well perfect perfect moment in your life you're you're not sick you're well uh, your business is going right Whatever you're doing is going right. Your marriage is fine. Fine. Your relationship is perfect. Everything is perfect. And in those moments, of course, you can say, "Well, I can inspire other people because everything is going right." And you maybe you can say, "Well, I have something to inspire, but things are going fine." But imagine if if things do go wrong. Every, you know, if, let's say if even if you have an accident or something like that, you can inspire other people. But not going crazy about that accident. If somebody did something wrong to you, you can inspire somebody else to not to be reactive, responding with a kindness. You can always, no matter how difficult situation is, by dealing with that situation the best you can. You inspire other people. Every given situation, you have opportunity to inspire other people because not what you tell them, but how you act. I think, uh, uh, so I think the first, the conclusion, the first, I think I would say, trying to experiment with inspiring other people that people you do know or already and people are especially asking for your help okay 
So are you ready to experiment the other one? No one has put up a question for the video yet. Okay. So the, of course there, of course all maybe you you all see Polly has put something out there that you can uh, um, ask the question through the video, and uh, if you are uh, spontaneous enough and brave enough to just show up your face here, and we can <laughs> ask the question. So um, we can try that. If not, that's fine too. Um, I guess. Uh, maybe people aren't aware if they want to respond by video, they should just field their question first by chat. So, okay, if you wanted to uh, respond, if you wanted to ask the question, so first chart, ch uh, chat and send your question that you wanted to do, do it through the video, and then uh, I think Polly will uh, able to uh, sh sh show you how to do that, uh, particularly the group maybe. Um, yeah, and the uh, you you can see the instructions on the top of the chat screen. Polly has posted them there. Mm. So. You can see the uh, instruction on the chat screen. Yes, is that like yeah? I can give you another chat question if you like. Well, okay, that's fine. So this is from Liz. I am suffering. I know it is because of my pain, speech, anger, and frustration are all that come out of my mouth, mind, and body. I see it as well in my mother, my sister, my father. Like pain and suffering is all we know, and we inflict that in others. From my mind, I know this is not helping me or benefiting others, but I don't know where to start to stop that pain speech. So the question about pain speech is somebody saying, kind of, kind of explaining a long situation that it, it's difficult to control in family and the situations but the bottom line question is how to how to minimize that or how to stop the pain speech I think it's a wonderful question mm. I personally what I did and what I do is to be interested in my pain speech first to be interested in my to be interested in my being to be aware of my pain speech and for me personally to be more interested in to be having awareness of in my pain speech to people i love because it does not make any sense to hurt somebody you love saying something which means nothing no use, not not important topic at all. It's very important. We do that all the time in our life, but do not to take it to to the level that it hurts somebody. So, once you say, "I'm interested to be aware of my speech," I'm interested to be aware of my pain speech. Particularly, I'm interested to, to be aware of my pain speech to these people. I don't want to hurt them. I love them. Keep that interest awake enough, frequent enough, remember enough. That will be the good start. Okay? That's fine. That's fine. So um, I think, um, let's see, how are we doing on time? OK, so maybe one more question, that's all. We, we, we have our first video question. OK.
So I'm just waiting here this moment to somebody to ask this interactive video question. This is the first time we are trying to experiment this. So people can ask face to face directly. We don't know it will work or it will not work, but please be patient. Okay, we're gonna go to another chat question. Well, that okay. gets figured out. So this is from Francine, who asks, how do you handle someone you notice that you get triggered by back into your pain body, putting you out of understanding with yourself, someone who discounts your experience? How do you stand your ground in your center? If someone is triggering you, triggering you to get out of your um, ground, and how do you um, stand get back into your center okay so the question is that how um when 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 somebody is uh, uh, trying to trigger you and trying to disconnect with you, you, you with your ground how to get back to your ground so uh, how to be reconnect back with yourself so yeah um yeah, so basically, sometimes people do that, trigger us to disconnect. Sometimes we feel they're doing it. Maybe they're not doing it. We feel they're doing it. So for whatever reason, however situation is, that if you are aware that it is that situation is somehow affecting you and disconnecting with you, and then that very moment, what are you trying to do? As I always say, take three precious pills be aware do three things be aware of the stillness in your body be aware of the silence of your speech be aware of the spaciousness of your mind okay I'll make it simpler way be feel the stillness in your body Feel the silence in that moment and just be open and bring your attention to that place. If you do bring attention to that place, you will be more protected. Less, less likely it will continue you to disconnect. You will be more protected. Okay? Okay, so I think uh, uh, we're going to uh, finish uh, because it seems like uh, this uh, system of uh, asking questions in the video is a little more complicated. So, but I will wanted to let every, let all of you know. Maybe the next live webcast we're going to try that, so you can see this. There's opportunity to do that, but we wanted to look at the, all the questions, you know, to make sure the questions are appropriate questions. And so you send it in, and then uh, particularly I, I wanted to request, I know there are a number of places there is a group group of you are watching the live webcast. And uh, maybe if you are inspired to do, maybe take some photos of your group. You are watching the video and your place, and uh, and uh, those you don't have objection with that. And maybe send some photos to us, although sometimes we would like to see uh, which country, which place people are watching as a group. Uh, we, I, I would definitely would love, love to see them, and also, so it's just kind of more inspiring. It inspires me to so seeing those things happening elsewhere, and uh, so with the group, maybe the whoever is doing the group, uh, kind of organizing the group to to watch the lab webcast together. Maybe technology wise, maybe one of you, whoever is doing it, maybe trying to figure out how how this system works. That might be better uh able to do that so somehow a little bit more interactive i think would be great okay so that's all thank you and uh i have a few announcements one uh, i uh, on my facebook page uh, i've shared a short video about the uh, healing from the source uh, meditation as a medicine for body and mind so july 9th through july 31st this year it's a free three-week online workshop and uh, it's through the glidewing.com and so this is a, a research project so that 
particularly uh, research, doing research, how these meditation will help the pain, physical pain and emotional, deep emotional pain. And so there are very specific instruction, meditation uh, guided and support materials, uh, how to work with that in order to reduce and in order to help these pains. So this is a, uh, I think it will be great uh, for all of you, those who are particularly do are going through those pains and a uh, great opportunity. And, uh, and and if you know anybody else who is, uh, will be very beneficial for somebody, I think it will be a great gift for, from you to them if they are open uh, to let them know, share with them. And of course, when you sign up in this, uh, there is a commitment that you have to feel every day, you have to feel it will take maybe a few minutes to do it. I think as far as, far as I remember, and but it will not too complicated. Uh, but we do need to uh, collect those data. So I uh, invite you again. It's uh, it's a free. So I invite you everybody and let everybody else know. And uh, and the last our last next one is I think is our last uh, live webcast on the enlightened leadership and. And the last one will be more based on a question and answer. So I think it will be great if we can figure out that technology more like interactive, able to do that it will be great. And then and um, our main, as many of you know, our main center is in Virginia, in Serenity Ridge, a beautiful uh, place. And I uh, strongly encourage people to uh, come there. And this year we have a sleep yoga uh, retreat for two weeks, uh, June 25th through, uh, what is it? No. So, uh, so anyway, so June 19th through July 2nd, it looks like. So we have two weeks retreat there. And not only this retreat, but any other retreat in Serenity Ridge, I strongly encourage people to come uh, because this is the time where we, are able to uh, stay longer uh, and go deeper in the practice and also more socially more know each other and hang out with each other more that's able to do that more uh, I think uh, will be great so I in, uh, invite you those who are able to make it uh, welcome all of you and uh, I think that's kind of all for now and uh, so we will end our uh, today with our dedication here now. Thank you.